a video game released in August 2014, created by Scott Co- Wait, wait, am I Scott Cawthon? <laughs> You're right, I don't know my own lore. What am I doing? And welcome to GT Not Live, where we are long, long overdue for a meme review. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back on the couch, over on the subreddits, over on Twitter, over on literally anywhere and everywhere. You can send us your memes, your ideas, your fan art, your compositions, your artwork, like just everything. Like, uh, there's been a lot that's been happening. Unfortunately, I've been traveling a lot lately, and there's just been a lot of other stuff that's been hitting lately between um, Garden of Ban Ban just launched, I know, and then there is Amanda the Adventurer, and there's there's been a lot of just stuff that we've had to get through, so we haven't had a lot of chance to sit down on the couch and actually do a dedicated... You were sick, I was gone, Steph was gone, so I was juggling that, which limited my ability to, to film because I had to juggle a lot more things. So across the board... There's been a lot happening that's prevented us from actually sitting down on the couch and engaging with the stuff that you've sent in over on, um, you know, Reddit, Twitter, whatever. Um, so today is that day, finally. It is long, long overdue because uh, there's been a lot of really good stuff. And uh, we're going to hopefully highlight as many as we can. I swear we won't linger on any of them too long. Nope. I mean, I say that, and then fast forward to, like, 15 minutes later, we're, like, two in, and it's like, oh, there it is. Uh, so we'll try to highlight as many as possible here, but just know that uh, Ash and I and the rest of the team actually are all constantly on uh, the the subreddit, on, on Twitter, and looking at the stuff. It, like, it's great. Like, it all gets you, even if we don't necessarily spotlight everything here, uh, one, it's just you guys send so much cool stuff, but two, just so you know, a lot of it gets shared internally across our, like, little private discord and stuff where everyone's like oh did you see this or like oh have you talked about this theory idea or whatever so it 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 we see it just so you know like we we love it we love you guys we love everything that you send in so um just across the board uh ashley pulled up a, a lot of stuff for us yes i sure did um and i know some of y'all aren't uh reddit users so if you prefer to share on twitter be sure to at me at ash gt live um, or hashtag GT Live, and I'm also on there pretty frequently. Happy Patrick. Yes. Was that an air up bottle Why, in your yes. hand right now? Why, yes, that is my air up bottle, Ash. Thank you for noticing. I got a nice, cool blue one now. I was about to say, what a beautiful shade. Just like Pokemon, I gotta catch them all. <laughs> <laughs> gotta catch them all. Fun fact, by the way, um, Ali is now into Pokemon. That's his new media <gasps> obsession. Really? We are four episodes into the original anime. Kanto region? Yeah, I, yep. And we also, he, Ash just caught his first Pokemon, and they're headed to the pewter gym, and Ali now wants a birthday party that's themed around Pokemon, and uh, we, I, we went to the library the other day, and I got him his first manga. <gasps> like, I just grabbed, like, episode one of... I, I think it's, like, the Sun and Moon arc, because that's just what they had available. Yeah. Like, go figure, the local North Carolina library has a limited selection of just manga available on the shelf. I, I'm sure I could order it. But uh, but I'm like, this is interesting and different for, you know, him. Like, might as well. Yeah. And so we're, we are slowly working our way through that, too. Oh, that's so exciting. Mm -hmm. So be prepared. You might be invited to our, uh, to Ali's five-year Pokemon-themed birthday party. It was going to be Bendy and the Ink Machine, which... Would have been fine, and I think there's cool things that you could do with a cake with that one. But, uh, man, I tell you, Pokemon's going to be a lot easier. Yeah. If he sticks with Pokemon, that is a lot easier. I had a Pokemon-themed birthday party back in the day, and I've been chasing that high ever since. So <laughs> I would be peak. more than happy. That was the peak. Yeah. Uh, but, no, thank you for bringing up my Arab bottle, which is, you know, hashtag sponsor of today's episode. Uh, I am trying to catch them all yeah. as far as the different colors of bottle. Uh, at this point, you've seen me, I think, I have a black one. I have the, like, big uh, thermos black one, the, mm -hmm. the pitch black one, which is literally, like, your water stays cool overnight. Like, it's amazing. Because uh, sometimes I just fall asleep at my computer and I wake up the next morning and I'm like, I'm thirsty. And I'm like, I have water over here. Oh, it's still cool. It's amazing. It's, it's very well insulated. And now I've started to branch into more fun colors because I see everyone around the office 
with fun colors. Like, Rachel just got one. Yeah, she sure did. She got, what, rose? Like, rose gold or whatever? Yeah, she got like, the pink one. The pink one, which is legit. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, ooh, that's a fun one. So, right? Like, I'm a little jealous. I feel like it's a rite of passage now at this point to get your, your air up bottle. <laughs> um, they also come with all the fun little tabs. And now we have a selection of all the tabs. True story. We have the selection of all the tabs that you can swap out. And... Um, so I thought that this one came with the electric blue, but I'm like, ooh, I want to mix it up with contrasty colors. Yes. All these style theories about uh, color theory and stuff. I'm like, I need that. Um, speaking of, but uh, speaking of color, also flavor, catch them all. Yes. What, what's your flavor of the day? Um, well, why don't I show you? Heads up. What's this? Whoa. Orange aid. Mm-hmm. I, I, I haven't tried orange aid. Now's your chance. Orange, orange. This is new. I so at this point I feel like I've I, I'm actually kind of surprised because in the idea of Pokemon I like trying them all and so I've tried like all the flavors like cucumber obviously the, great awesome watermelon you know I've talked about wild berry like all all of those and I know orange vanilla but I haven't I haven't seen orange aid. Can I try a cucumber? I will swap you an orange aid for a cucumber. Yes, I like. Can I let Let's do our direct cable, like our cable connection. Yeah. Like on the old Game Boy, I'll trade you a Charmander for a Blastoise. <laughs> oh my gosh, you got a Ho-Oh? -Oh? Okay, great. Yes. Mm -hmm. Trade that. Oh, I used my Master Ball on this Pokemon. Okay, here we go. I got mine. Wait, you said cucumber? Yes, please. Here we go. Oh, jeez. I hope I didn't break the new computer over there. Ooh. Ooh, it's very orangey. Wow. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. It's, it's like literally like biting into a, a an orange, but, you know, more watery. And again, uh, for those of you who don't know, obviously, Air Up, uh, if you've been watching the channels for a while, you're familiar at this point. But just to reiterate, for those of you who aren't familiar, it literally, uh, it's, it's their scent. These are little scent pods that trick your body, trick your taste buds into thinking you're tasting flavor when you're just drinking water. And so the water here is just pure water, and you pop it up, and it, it pumps scent in there. At which point the scent mixes in with the water, which makes it feel like, oh, I'm drinking something that's orange flavored. And if I get sick of it or if I don't like it or whatever, you just pop it down just like that. And then you're just drinking straight water. Um, and there's tons of different flavors at this point. Like I said, I feel like I've caught them all. And so I was surprised. Did they, did they just ship this one? Is this a new one? In the new batch? It's entirely possible. That's cool. I like just discovered it. I like it. So uh, right now, I've talked a lot about how Wildberry is one of my tops. That's one I go to. But when I mix it up, I actually, that's why I have watermelon and uh, the basil lemon, actually, which you wouldn't be like, oh, that's a weird one. But no, th those two are legit. Basil I'm, lemon goes hard. Right? Basil lemon. It goes like, hard. If, if you were to ask me, like, which which flavor are you going to go with, Matt? I wouldn't go with basil lemon. Nor, like, I wouldn't, like, be like, that's one I want to try. But it, it is so good. Mm -hmm. Like when Because I'm like, I got to try them all. That one's legit. So anyway, air up. Uh, I'm sure there's a code down below with an offer of some form that I probably could articulate to you if I knew what it was, but I don't know what it is. So with uh, that sponsorship out of the way, thank you again, air up, for always uh, sponsoring us and, and also just making me a healthier individual uh, for encouraging me to finally drink water. Uh, I couldn't find the pods the other day, and I'm like, I need my pods. I don't want to drink plain water, um, even though it is. It's all plain water. It's just scent. Uh, thank you for sponsoring. Now let's move on to the memes, shall we? Woo! Uh, so as always, uh, hop on over to the game theorist. My my mouse has decided to reduce Your all DPI sensitivity. Your DPI went way it, down. It went way down. Why did that happen? I don't know. That was strange. <laughs> um. Anyway. Uh, so as always, uh, we're pulling these from a lot of different places. Obviously, there's the Game Theorist subreddit. We, we finally crossed 775,000 <gasps> theorists there, which is insane. That is insane, guys. That is awesome. Like, again, I've, I've said this in the past, but, you know, I, it's, it's impressive that, like, whoa, GT Live has all these millions of people, and oh, Game Theory has all these millions of people. I am so proud of the community that we have on Reddit because we are one of the biggest Reddits and one of the most positive communities, and you guys are just awesome. So, like, thank you for that. But I also want to call out special love uh, to all of them. Uh, independently, you guys have created... We should probably join all of you them, should shouldn't should probably we? join we them. <laughs> I'm like, why haven't we joined these? Um, but, <laughs> yeah, we should join them. Uh, but, yeah, there are all the different subreddits. Obviously, Film Theorist, GT Live, now Food Theory, Style Theory has one, and Game Theory Memes. So, and all of them are solid. So, uh, please check them out. I'm surprised I wasn't joined to them. Because I checked out Style Theory and I've checked out Food Theory. Or, or uh, Game Theory Memes. I haven't checked. 
Style theory I didn't know existed. Food theory and, and game theory means I checked out. But uh, now that I know that style theory exists, I gotta check that one out too. Oh, but yeah. but uh, legit, across the board, they're all affiliated with each other. Um, it's And all of them are different. And they're all forming their own unique communities, which is great. So uh, without any further ado, let's just hop into it. Uh, this is from Friday Night Filming. Uh, Snapchat AI explaining the... F- Snapchat AI explaining the FNAF timeline. So we've talked about doing an AI episode for a long time. And maybe my work is done now. Explain the FNAF timeline. The AI says, The Five Nights at Freddy's timeline is a bit complicated, but I'll do my best to explain it. The first game takes place in 1993. Sorry, that's that's my contribution, so take it with a grain of salt. At Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, where the player takes on the role of the security guard who has to survive five nights while being stalked by animatronics. In the second game, which takes place in 1987, the player takes on the role of a different security guard. Maybe! Can we be sure? Uh... <laughs> Uh, who also has to survive five nights while being stalked. Uh, excuse me, you're forgetting uh, the custom nights there at the end. Um, there's also uh, Night 6, Friendo, uh, Get Good AI. The third game takes place in 2023, 30 years after the first game. Uh, and the player takes on the role of the security guard at a horror attraction based on the original restaurant. The fourth game... T- this isn't so much a timeline as just the AI reading you the Steam descriptions. <laughs> Let's be honest. Fourth game it takes place in 1983... Uh, how do you know that, though? That could just be an Easter egg on the TV. And is set in the bedroom of a child who is being terrorized by animatronics from the original restaurant. Uh, finally, the fifth game... There's only five. What? That's it? Uh, you're neglecting the books and the VR spinoff and... F- where's FNAF World? Is FNAF World canon? Actually, that's what I'm, I want to hop into chat GPT and ask them. Is FNAF World canon to the FNAF franchise? I wonder what it would say. Finally, the fifth game, Sister Location, takes place in an underground facility where the player takes the role of a technician who has to keep the animatronics in check. So, okay. So, pretty pretty surface line there. But uh, who did the bite of 87? AI. Maybe that's that's another... Can can we ask... D- Everyone's asking chat GPT and, and all these AIs, the, the, the bards of the world, what's the FNAF lore? Can someone ask the actual deep cut questions? Who is Cheeto Man? And AI's like, I, what are you even talking about? Or like, hey, who did the bite of 87? It'll, it'll probably spit back like Markiplier. Like, that's that's the sort of I, AI answer. Sure, okay. You could do it. It's an AI answer. Let's do it. All right. So here we go. Chat GPT. Uh, let's do this. So uh, dear Chat GPT, uh, who did the bite of eighty seven? I'm just gonna ask that without even contextualizing that it's FNAF. Bite of eighty seven is a fictional event from the video game franchise. Find it. Good job. Well done so far. It's depicted as an incident where one of the animatronics, most likely the character named Fred Bear. Whoa. Bit off the frontal lobe of a person, causing serious... Most likely, the character Fredbear. The game's story suggests that the incident may have been caused by malfunctioning animatronics or by someone tampering with them. However, it is important to note that the Bite of 87 is purely a fictional event and did not occur in real life. There you go. Uh, Isn't that the Bite of 83, though? Yeah, see, that's the thing. I think it's confused with the Bite of 83. Who... Who did the Bite of 83... He's going to be like, I don't know what this is. <laughs> yeah, it's having to think. There is no official reference to the Bite of 83 in the Five Nights at Freddy's franchise. Hey! However, some fans have speculated that it might refer to an incident where the, one of the animatronics, Fred Bear, bit a child's head, causing serious injury. Fred Bear did them all! He's like, just biting. Yeah. Exactly. Who is Shadow Freddy? <laughs> He's just biting them all. All the bites are coming from Fred Bear. Oh my God. Shadow Freddy is a character from Five Nights at Freddy's. It's a mysterious shadow version of the character named Freddy Fazbear with a dark purple color and glowing eyes. In the game's story, Shadow Freddy is believed to be an entity connected to the dark past of the animatronic characters and the mysterious company. That... I like that the answers are vague enough that it's like, oh yeah, I guess that's technically right. It's often associated with strange and supernatural occurrences, maybe involved in the manipulation of other characters or events. Uh, the true identity and purpose of Shadow Freddy has not been fully revealed. It will never be revealed, chat GPT. Don't, don't hold your animatronic breath. Don't, don't hold your digital AI breath. Is FNAF World canon? Let's see. Here we go. Good luck! Good luck! FNAF World is a spinoff game from Five Minutes of Freddy's franchise with features of uh, role-playing game style uh, with various characters from the main series. While well, the creator of the franchise, Scott Cawthon, has stated that the game was intended to be non-canon and separate from the main series, there are some elements within the game that suggest it may be connected to the overarching story of the Five Nights of Freddy's fictional universe. For example, FNAF World features characters and locations from the main series, and certain events and dialogues within the game reference the main series. I mean, it's pretty pretty solid. However, the game's events and story do not have a significant impact on the overall narrative. Oh, that's what you think. Did you know one that came up to me the other day that I'd forgotten? This was a theory that kicked around way back in the day, 
that mm. I had forgotten about. Now I'm like, oh, this probably has a lot more lore importance than I used to think. What's up? Let me show you. This is... This has got me to rethink everything again. So, the layout of FNAF World's map... This was back when FNAF World first launched. Mm -hmm. The layout of FNAF World's map was thought to resemble a human head oh. and a brain. With a, oh. with a brain stem or vertebra. Yeah, I can see that. You have the like cerebellum and mm -hmm. kind of like the back parts of the brain, like the, the rear lobes. You have the frontal lobe up here. And you have all, yeah, you have this kind of like all these, uh, um, I believe they're, they're called the, the gyri, uh, gyruses, uh, which are the kind of like uh, spiral lumps in your brain and the mm. sulci are the like valleys in your brain that basically your brain the reason our brain looks the way it does is because it wants to have as much surface area as possible for the neuronal connections which is why you don't have a smooth brain but why our brains are all folded and lumpy it's because it's trying to maximize surface area for all the neurons uh that is why the brain has this kind of like curvy like lumpy lobey shape uh which again you see reflected in the design of the map of FNAF world Interesting. Mm-hmm. Huh. And if the whole idea is I will put you back together and you're going layers and layers deeper into this animatronic code or this, like, you know, this 8-bit and, and the, the graphics get simpler and simpler as you go levels deeper into this world. It And now, fast-forwarding to where we are today where we're like, oh, there are robot people in this world. Maybe this is the creation of a robot brain. I don't know. Huh. Yeah. Isn't that weird? That is weird. Yeah, it's one of those clues that back in the day I'm like, oh, people are reaching. But now that I, now that the franchise has gotten to like sister location, and now we're we're pretty convinced that someone here at some point is a robot, and we're we've perfectly simulated like human intelligence in robotic form. Just saying. Have you ever seen your brain? Have I seen my brain? Yes, I have. Isn't it cool? It's awesome. Is there anything weird with your brain? No. I, I sold my body to science in college for $20 an hour. Mm -hmm. And so on weekends where I had nothing to do, I'd be like, yeah, well, you could do some fMRI experiments on me. And I would just lay there in a tube clicking buttons while, you know, <laughs> prompts went around. It took like an hour to calibrate the machine. And so you would watch like the first hour of Finding Nemo. The hardest thing was staying awake. But yeah, at the end, you would get to see like the full scan of your brain. And it was just, I'm like, that's it. That's, oh, that's awesome. That's so cool. Yeah. Have you? Yeah, I've seen my brain. So cool, right? Yeah. Isn't it weird? It's like, whoa, that's me. Like, that yeah. is the essence. It's also weird when they you see the little notes that they write about mm -hmm. your brain, where it's yeah. like, there's like a weird structural thing with the back of my brain, uh -huh. and they don't know what it means or what the implication of it yeah. is, but it is like an, obs like an observed abnormality. Huh, interesting. And I also have a slightly smaller right temporal lobe. Really? Yeah. That's fascinating. Right? Does that affect your day-to-day -day judgment? Or have they talked to you about like, <laughs> hey, right temporal lobe is usually for X, Y, and Z purposes, and... Huh, no, nope, but you know what? <laughs> it is entirely possible. Yeah, that's I'm just, fascinating. I'm just, you know, free free balling it. Well, uh, maybe it, maybe free it's it, free braining, yeah. free braining it. I wonder if it has something to do with <laughs> word recollection. <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's what it is. That's what it is. I forget. Uh, right temporal lobe. I, I, it's been a long time since I've had to think about the the parts of the brain and what they do. I'll have to remind myself. But yeah. So anyway, 15 minutes later, and we're on uh, prompt one. <laughs> <laughs> I swear we'll, we'll speak. Okay, I made through an I made an animation. This is from uh, Ashmed Way twenty five seventy five. Okay, this is legitimately incredible. Look at this. Oh. This is great. Lip. People are so talented. Also, if you made shurikens of our logo that looked like that, like just spiky blades <laughs> that you could just taught like ninja star style. <laughs> Yes. That's like, awesome. th these things look deadly. Kill them with lore. Kill, <laughs> kill them with kindness. Or lore! <laughs> no! <laughs> not a style theory to the neck! I hate when that happens. Here we go. I trans... Okay, this is uh, on the Revere. Uh, I transcribed the GT theme Science Blaster from memory and added a little bit of my own composition at the end. Probably upload myself playing on the saxophone in a week or so. Blast it. Let's, let's do Science this. blast it. Ooh. I like that we were saying, like, blast it! It's like, oh no. <laughs> Auto generated keyboard. I've always, I'm actually really glad that you did this. I've always wanted someone to transcribe this into sheet music. 
Because I believe when we pass it on to other people, they have to kind of figure it out. Because even Ryder, Ryder is, we're talking about doing more music stuff with Ryder, and Ryder's a musical genius, but he does everything by ear. And when I show him sheet music, because I know sheet music, because from my choral days, from my orchestra days where I played viola, and I'm like, hey, can we transcribe this to sheet music? He's like, I can't, like, I don't know what sheet music would look like. I just know how to play it out. So being able to transcribe things into sheet music is incredibly valuable because then you can, you know, it, it's able to, to go other places without you having to just like feel it out and hear it out. So this is awesome. So I look forward, let me say, I look forward to the saxophone rendition in a week or so. I love like the kind of coffee house, like, you know, smooth beats to relax and theorize to. Well, it's, and... it's, it's funny that you bring that up. Uh, I, so, I, and I'd love to actually your comments down below. Uh, let me know. Uh, but one of the things that uh, Ryder and I are talking about doing uh, is doing a theorist lo-fi. Like a theorist lo-fi and potentially there being hidden lore in it. No of course. way. Yeah, but like a, a, a theorist like study to relax to playlist or whatever. And there would be and, and eventually, like, if it goes well and if you guys like it and if you're excited about it, like, I, I have this whole vision in there about, like, one for each channel, each one kind of using the base themes as your launch point, but each one has, like, a different mood attached to it. Like, one's a slightly more energized, one's a little bit more, like, you know, laid back, or, you know, and one to sleep to or whatever, but they're all, each one has its own personality. If there's a GT Live theme one, yeah. that's going to be, like, my most played song on Spotify. Yeah. And when you look at the analytics, you will see me. Okay. I will be in the top point zero zero one percent of listeners. Users. Yeah, <laughs> right. No, I I love it because I I mean I listen to Lo-Fi every day and and the other the the other day Lunar you know parent company now uh, they were saying like oh part of the company over here is working on a Lo-Fi project and, and we're doing our own Lo-Fi playlist and the music team has been doing an amazing job and I'm like wait a minute there's there's like a lo-fi team and stuff like and they're doing lo-fi stuff. like we should do that that's such a good idea like yeah. i never thought about that but all of a sudden like and that's one of the cool things about like working with other people now is it opens my mind to like oh i would love to do that sort of thing and again through our unique lens it's like oh but just like you have lo-fi girl and now the, all the offshoot characters that have branched off of there it's like we could have our own roster of characters and there's like lore in the background or maybe every once in a while in a song there's like a whispered word or like a, a, a note pattern and if you transcribe it into the music now all of a sudden you have a note pattern that spells out facade like we saw in Amanda the Adventure yeah, you can use yeah. notation of music to spell things that then become code anyway all of that is is a ways away we had our first call about it though uh, earlier this week on Wednesday um, oh, I, I've talked to people informally about it, but we had the first like kickoff call this week, and I'm like, let's see if there's viability there. Let's see if there's interest there. Ryder seems hyped. I'm I'm hyped about it. Lunar seems hyped. So like all of us are like, let's do this. So we'll see. Let me know down in the comments. Is that interesting to you? I think I would use the heck out of it. It sounds like you would use the heck out of it. Sure so, would. If nothing else, we'll just do it for ourselves. Just like an internal album. Yeah, just That's an internal awesome. album that we just listened to. Um, okay, this is from Alby Pie. Denmark has recently banned Prime due to high levels of vitamin A. You heard it here first. A sale of popular prime energy drink. Not legal in Denmark. Yeah, is that because vitamin A? Yeah, vitamin A, uh, I think it's, is it liver? I forget, but I, I came across that in the research where, it, you know, too much of a good thing suddenly becomes a bad thing. And especially with uh, prime being supercharged with a lot of this stuff, they might have overshot it uh, in some of the categories. And, and this is one of those. Where I'm, so I'm not surprised to see this, but I am proud to say like, hey, we called it. Good for us. Woo! I guess, yay! Um, no, you know that's 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 the trick of doing a, a food or a beverage or whatever. Is anything you ingest? There's so many other factors that you have to consider. You have to consider, but like, and doing food theory, and it's interesting, right? I've learned a lot through food theory that there are so many considerations that I would have never known about or considered myself had I not had a channel dedicated to the science of food at this point. And 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 I'm so glad that we now have Santi on, on board, who is our creative director for food theory who has a history with food. Like, he knows food. Like, he is a food scientist. He's been cooking forever. Like, he... And, and in a professional capacity, like, he's great. And he is so knowledgeable. And I feel so much better about the level of knowledge that we'll be able to deliver moving forward because he's approaching... You know, we had him on the, the energy drink one. And he's like, oh, I can tell you all about the history of gu guarana. And, and he says it the proper way as opposed to all of us. in a, Guarana! You know? <laughs> 
like he says it with a proper Spanish accent because like that's, that's where it originates and this and that. And he's like, oh, and I can tell you about like the absorption of caffeine through the body. And, the, and for me, that would be me having to like train myself from zero up to learn that stuff. Where I'm like, oh, bioavailability, that's an interesting thing, and this and that. And I lead down these rabbit holes, but he's like, oh, yeah, I just, I just know this. So that's, so that's cool. Um, and having him has been a, a really big asset, which is great. Yeah, hopefully there will be a time where we can get him on the couch for GT Live. Because mm-hmm. I think y'all would really vibe with he's, Santi. He's great. He has, like, the best energy ever. He's, he's, he's cool. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's super smart. He, I think he fits in well with the team. He does, yeah. yeah. He, he vibes well. He's got some good stories. <laughs> um he's yeah he, he's fun you you saw him very briefly maybe in the prime energy episode uh where unfortunately a lot of his footage got cut and that was his call not mine because i would have been like insert more of yourself but you know he's he's easing into things but yeah he's he's great you'll you'll love him when he when he comes into town and we get him back on the couch it'll be great next up hey <laughs> this is uh from she show she's says, congrats to GT Live for pi million subscribers, baby! 3.1415? Are we 3.1415? 99? I know that the publicly facing number only gives you the first couple. So here, I'll, I'll let you know where we're at right now. As of today. As of today o'clock. Here we go. Are we at 3.1415? Let's see. We are at... We are at 3.15. <gasps> oh, so we're at the rounded... We're at rounded pie. We're at we're at when you improperly round pie. <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah, three point one five one five is oh, what wow. we're at right now. Three point one five one five. So we're making strides. <laughs> making making big man of the adventure. <laughs> yeah, big. That was a big one. She did a lot. She 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 served for us. She did. Her plus Corey X Kenshin. You know there was a, that was a match made in heaven right there. It sure was. And it, it was a beautiful thing. Uh, Garten Ban Ban. Strap in. Oh, we're, oh, we're on the garden train up, up, oh, up, yeah. up, to, the, up to the heavens. Prepare yourselves for part two. <laughs> it's going to go crazy. God, nuts, man. Just wait. <laughs> and when part four drops, four, five gardens at Ban Ban. <laughs> five gardens <laughs> at Ban Ban. Yeah, That's five where gardens. I want to be. That's it. That's the fifth. Uh, here we go. Uh, Doug Geek, uh, 1219. Vita Carnus in a nutshell. So Vita Carnus, uh, we reacted to over here. It was a film theory recently. Uh, the government feeding people meat plants so they have food. The government letting a cult turn people into meat creatures so they no longer have to feed. Ah, yeah, that is where the theory went to, didn't it? Well, I don't know. In the in the lore of the series, they allude to the fact that there are high ups in society or whatever who are, you know, feeding people to this thing, or that they're, you know, that this entity, the singularity, is this kind of like entity that's feeding off of humans and slowly like ingesting their bodies through various traps and tricks and monsters you know and then that there's a there's there seems to be a group of humans that are participating and supporting them and the government hasn't been doing a whole lot to regulate the use of of the crawl and all the vita carnis creatures and so i'm just saying Calling it like a, they could have, they could have kept it as simple as just use the weird meat plant to feed people. But with anything, there's always like a, some sinister motive underneath. I see, I see why this one might have been construed in a negative way. I might have read a bit into that one. Next up, uh, the theory system. Oh yes, uh, this is from uh, Raven MRD. So I've seen this one circulating. So I'm glad you pulled this one up. Uh, theory sisters lore dump. So. I believe, as this one goes, and I haven't uh, gotten... I've seen the initial character intros for these guys. But basically, uh, Raven here has created a an AU, as it says here, of the Theory Sisters. So ever since we launched Style Theory, now that the ring's complete, a lot of you have been kind of adopting that and saying like, hey, each one has its own personality, which I fully agree with. We've been kind of pursuing that angle for a while now, uh, where, you know, there's a rivalry with film theory and game theory. Uh, food theory is kind of the goofy one. Uh, style theory is now like the classy older sister or whatever. And so a hundred percent agree with you. And it's been awesome to see on the subreddit, you guys developing your own character models for them, your own lores attached to them. I love it. It is awesome. And like you, like I said before, with like the lo-fi stuff, like there might be a world where we lean more into like creating lore of the channels themselves. Right. Um, but this is one I've seen, uh, a lot of posts about, or at least a couple posts about recently where, they are the theory sisters, and they're all sisters of the same family, and they all have their personalities, right? So you have Game Theory, who's the oldest child. She's the mom sibling. She's very tired. <laughs> very tired. <laughs> Understandable. Very tired. Can often be found staring at her FNAF timeline conspiracy board, just off in the distance. Mom, when are you going to feed me? Quiet. Quiet. 
I need to solve the lore. I need to figure out if FNAF World is canon. Jet GPT did not give me a helpful answer. Uh, if you fall, she will tell you to get up and ask if you're... Get up. You all right? Shake it off. Game Theory usually keeps her ego in check, but occasionally reminds her sisters that she came first. So she's the oldest. I was the first. I have seen everything. <laughs> I am the chica of this family. Yeah. Okay. Please, if you're the oldest sibling, go around and tell everyone in your family that you're the chica of the family. Thanks. Yeah, I think my mom will totally understand me when I say that. Yeah, uh, actually, you know, down down in the comments, all the chicas unite, unite, all you chicas, let it be known down in the comments. Chica crew. I'm the chica crew. Despite regularly complaining about how many of them there are, she does not miss. Wait, despite regularly complaining about how many of them there are, she does not miss when it was only her. Okay, I see. Uh, she's like, oh, back in the day when I was only a child, she has eyes on the back of her head. Deep, deep, I don't know if that's literal or figurative, but that is interesting lore nonetheless. And they are always on the other channels when they're at events. GT Live, the second child gives wine ant. Yes. <laughs> wine ant vibes, talkative in a good way. Always tries to keep her sisters from overworking themselves. Yeah, just hang out. Yeah, let's party. Woo, Woo it's a party. Let's hang out. She'll try not to laugh if you fall. Uh, has ADHD. <laughs> Yes, she does. Yes, she does. She's very energetic. <laughs> Wait a minute. What about that? Oh, look over there. Uh, she's secretly very tired because she posts the most often. <laughs> I like that all of them are just have the lore of tired. Just the theorist fam. Tired. Period. Can be most likely be found on the nearby couch. You can count on her to start an interesting conversation. Awesome. Film theory. The third child. 100% feral. Good. <laughs> yes. Good. Feisty. Feisty red. Secretly attention starved. That is true. Addicted to lo-fi. <laughs> I need it. I need it to chill me out. She gets really excited when Matt, Steph, and Team Theory come to visit, but acts like she doesn't care. I, yeah, that's fair. Like, oh, I'm getting attention. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, cool. Hey, welcome. Come on in if you want, I guess. Whatever. That's that's fine. She'll laugh if you fall. Yeah. Masochistic. <laughs> uh, has a high school mean girl rivalry with Mickey. The personification of Disney. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, Mickey. Slay. I like that Mickey, I, I, in this world, in this AU, I like to imagine that Mickey, the personification of Disney, is literally just another kid at, like, the high school or, like, another adult in the vicinity. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, my next door name, that's Mickey. You know, the personification of Disney. Yeah. Like, he's got, like, the, the Monsters, Inc. crew, like, running around. Like, the, the, hey, keep your Monsters, Inc. down! Yo, get your Sully off my lawn! <laughs> your Mike Wazowski peed in my <laughs> bushes again. Get out of here, Mickey, personification of Disney. The full name. Yeah. You have to say yeah. the full Mickey, name. Mickey, the personification of Disney. <laughs> Middle name, the. Oh, I love it. Gets into arguments with Game Theory. Very excited to steal Game Theory from that music. <laughs> now you're just talking about the channels themselves. She'll fight anyone that picks on her sisters. Food Theory, fourth child. No, uh, Film Theory is already excited to steal away the Mario views. Let's be honest there. Oh, yeah. Like, like... Game theory is like, ah, oh. it's, but it's also a, it's funny because it's like the hand me downs, which is kind of funny now that I think about it. Because, yeah, game theory is like, yeah, I, I'm done with my Mario. Because, you know, because Mario hasn't done a lot as a gaming franchise and we'll do it every once in a while. But, you know, obviously the gaming scene has largely moved on because there hasn't been a whole lot of news about Mario lately. So it's been kind of past, yeah, you can have my hand me downs film theory. Here's the Mario movie for you. And it's like, oh, it's doing well over here. Great. Awesome. The hand me downs. Amazing. <laughs> Food theory, fourth child, sweet but dumb. It's the cinnamon bun. <laughs> cinnamon bun. Loves cooking for her sisters and using them for her food experiments. If you fall, she'll pick you back up and give you a hug. I love the fact that uh, if you fall and the reaction to that fall is a key defining personality trait of this. It's this is very awesome. telling. It is. It tells you a lot, actually. It's cool. Um, she has paella? P pia? P pica. pica. Oh, pica. 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 I'm like, I'm sorry. I didn't see that it was a C. I'm like, oh, pie. <laughs> Is that a misspelling like, of the, the, the rice dish? Paella? Because that's She -A -E has the rice -L -L dish. Yeah, she has the rice dish. I was thinking of the food theory. A compliment from her about food is very high praise, and she'll always be brutally honest. She's banned Matt Pan's cell theory from the kitchen. That's fair. I don't blame you. Very patient and thoughtful. Gives the best hugs. I, I agree. I think food theory gives the best hugs. And then lastly, style theory. The fifth and youngest. Loves attention. Fashion <laughs> snob. Yep. Feels the need to prove herself despite the fact that we threw away 90% of, of makeup because of her advice on day one. That one that pushed you. That's awesome. I'm glad that she proved her worth to you early on. I, I think that fashion theory will continue to prove 
a lot of worth over the, the rest of the year. Uh, has high school mean girl energy with the personification of Shein. Uh, compliments all the other people's outfits. Uh, oh, compliments are few and far between. Yeah, she's very picky. She tries to give people genuine fashion advice, but sometimes comes off as, yeah, comes off as mm. rude. Yeah, that's the trick of fashion theory. And style theory is still figuring it out. <coughs> you know, I think style theory is still finding her voice, which again is why she's the youngest. Uh, you know, she's finding herself. She's finding her voice. She's finding where she fits in. And uh, it's great. I think I think she's a lot of fun right now. She's the fun one. Um, then there's, there's a lot more about lore and stuff here, which you can go and read in the world. Like, look at this. This is amazing. This is amazing. Look at how awesome this is. I love it. Uh, I love the one where, um, GT Live and Game Theory are drinking together. Right? Isn't it it awesome? It it makes me so happy. It's so cool. It's really, really cool. I love it. It's, it's, this picture right there, I, I love that. It, the, the relationship of the channels to each, like, this is what I aspire to. This, it's wonderful that they kind of bounce off each other that way. It's really fun. So thank you for putting that together. It's so cool. I look forward to seeing more stories or worlds or whatever you end up doing with that. It's awesome. Clap and a half? Clap and a half. Absolutely. Easily. Easily. Multiple claps and hams. Uh, Meanwhile, we have uh, some AI art, or not. Art in Wonder, my attempt at beating the AI. So this is a callback to our GT Live episode. Uh, This is on the GT Live uh, subreddit, by the way. Um... There's a callback to our episode a couple weeks ago where we did, which, a couple weeks ago, but we filmed uh, years On ago. January 5th, 2023, it did not get published until the last week of April, 2023. That one was, that one, that one was in the log for a while, I will yeah, say. Yeah, we had to let him cook. Yeah, we, he was cooking in the kitchen for a yeah. while. Yeah, Food Theory was dealing with him for a while. But uh, <laughs> we did that. It was a lot of fun. I mean, it was a lot of fun uh, trying to beat AI art, and I think... It ended up being like Ash won. Uh, Ash's art skills are incredible. If you haven't seen Ash's art skills, uh, I mean, obviously we have the glare face up there right now. So that's a real good demonstration of how Ash's art skills look. But uh, but no, really, Ash does really awesome stuff. But uh, one of them was Pikachu on a cake holding holding fork, um, which is this is great. This this wins. This, this be- wins. This, this wins. is the winner. This wins. This beats everyone. Certainly mine, but uh, also Ash and the AI. Uh, this is oh yeah, there was like Mario strutting down. Strut, this is a strut. This is Mario strut. Yeah, no one. They was, understood the assignment. Yeah, no one was really capturing the Mario strut. This is the Mario strut. Yeah. No creepy like mm. floaty hands or weird metal medical gloves either in yes. this one, which is nice. And then we got uh, Sonic being stuffed into an animatronic suit by Purple Guy. Excellent Purple Guy. This is a, this That's is solid. an excellent Purple Guy. I think three for three. You have bested Winner. us. Yeah, Winner. You've, you've won. You've won the game, Art and Wonder. Well done. It's great. Love it. Uh. Ineffable Bree. Ineffable Bree says, uh, or Bray, it will never be updated. Make a new GT Live intro. Keeping the old intro. So Steph is still here in spirit. Don't worry, if we do a new intro, we'll have like Steph's floating head. <laughs> just exist. like rotating keyframes around them. Just every, just, it's not even like subtly incorporated <laughs> in the background. It's not like an Easter egg, like, oh, oh, if you see it, you see it. It's literally just a floating head circulating around over and over and over again. It gives the energy of those screensavers where the logo bounces, bounces up and down, but she hits the corner every time. That, oh, and she hits the corner every time. Yeah. She wouldn't let you down like that. Wow. That's queen status right there. Absolute queen. Can you please scroll down to the comments on this? Yeah. To be honest, she's always there in spirit. She's part of the Theorist's multimedia franchise. I miss Steph and GT Live. I do too. Totally respect wanting to focus on the business side, the biggest job, motherhood. But uh, got her nugget point. Don't worry. If I, I gotta talk to those guys, what are they up to? We should do a game with them. If we, like again, like it, as I'm like, hey, with with Lunar's help and whatever, we can start pursuing some of these other cool, weird offshoot projects. Now that Style Theory is done and the ring is complete, it's like, what's the next thing that we're looking to? What are the next couple things that we're yeah. working on? And obviously, Lofi is kind of like a smaller one. The launch to Spotify has been like a nice little like that just kicks in the background. Um, but one of the things I've, again, one of the things I've wanted to do is launch like a a standalone IP somewhere that exists, but has lore and is interesting. And I've I've, like scripted podcasts as an animation show, as a video game and like kindergarten, like those guys got it. And I don't know what they've been up to lately, but I'd love to hit that. I should hit note to self, hit them up. Uh, so that way I can actually, you know, talk to them about what they're doing. But yeah, if, if, and when kindergarten never returns or she'll, she'll be back. Absolutely, oh, yeah. 100%. Must. Iconic. So, yes. if you go, <laughs> there's going to be, if you look through the comments, yes. you'll find a recurring sentiment. Purple. Um, Purple's my favorite color. I love Purple. Purple Club. Nope, right, right, right below. Yep. She didn't, she didn't die. 
Oh no. Oh, don't worry guys, she's not dead. What? Oh no. Oh no. It's, it's just so funny. I'm like, this poor person was just like, Steph's spirit is within GT Live and everyone was like, is she dead? <laughs> she's been stuffed into the animatronic suit that is GT Live. She's literally behind, the, her rotting corpse is literally behind the, the couch yeah. right now, infusing the spear, the remnant. Her remnant is with us. Her, I can't even. This, I can't even is, make the joke. This, no, don't don't make that joke. This is actually this is actually her right now. This is <laughs> this is Steph. Hey Steph. Uh, it's me, Nugget. It's me. I can't. I can't do it right now. I can't do this. It is I, Nugget. No, no, I can't. So this is why she needs to come back. This is also Docos, by the way. This is wild. I didn't know that Docos hex. I just got these, um, but I didn't know that Docos plushy like uh, FNAF collab. The hex stuff. It's really cool. Like really high quality. I didn't realize that they were magnet and that you could like rip them apart and put them back together like uh. mangle style so he could have like <laughs> his head just like under here Get it full screen, Look at it. that's awesome important. that's so cool twisted freddy i, I just i just created a new character off. wow you didn't realize what i didn't realize the head could come off oh yeah no every like the whole thing you could have like arms what are you doing you maniac <laughs> I, I kind of love. I kind of love him this way. Ah, I'm like a Tetris block. Um, anyway, so anyway, Daco quality merch. That's awesome. Um, next up, uh, no, Stephanie is alive and well, and literally a room away from me. But yeah, because of work and just the amount of stuff that had to get done, Ali obviously we had to divide and conquer. It was hard for us to find time where the books were clear enough that both of us could sit on the couch together at the same time, which is the reason why it's it's just me and she's like, you know, it's it's my time. And it made sense. So there we go. Uh, here we go. GT Live says, a collection of my spiciest GT memes for Meme Monday. Here we go. We need a new theory-themed week for the theory channels. Mystery Meat Week. Mystery Meat Week. FNAF. No yeet. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't be a Dan. Don't be Dan who proposed FNAF Week. Get out of here. They're all FNAF Weeks. Let's be honest. Spotify wrapped this year. Now that Game Theory is on Spotify. Yeah! You spent a th 10,000 minutes playing Game Theory FNAF Timeline. That's it. We're going to be your top channel over on Spotify. Just listen to the heck out of Game Theory stuff on there. That's awesome. Next up, my own <laughs> wedding. <laughs> the end. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> That's great. Come wearing your best for that upload. Uh, oh, here we go. One of these guys. Oh! I got Game Theory. Wow. Oh. oh. No, I'm just defaulting to Game Theory now. Should it stop if you grab it? I thought you grabbed it at different times. Um, I think there's a way, like, on the Reddit app, if you tap it, if you tap it, it will stop. But yeah, this is on, yeah. This is on the... We're, we're such plebs. Oh, WordPad's not going to do it. <laughs> no, it's the same thing! Curse you! You just well, have to, like, do, like, a screenshot at a random time. Right, okay, ready? Print screen. Let's see what we got. Whoa! That's actually one of the versions of Style Theory we tried. Uh, we tried a lot of different versions of Style Theory, so we got the heel. Ready? One more. Let's see what we got. Tw oh, Twitter Theory! Oh, no. oh man! Oh, no! Oh, no! One more, one more. What we got? <laughs> I feel like this just told us a story. It I did. feel like this was a story in three images. We went through an adventure. We did. We that. went through an adventure, For and sure. it ended with a troll at the end. It's like, ha ha, you got Twitter Theory. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, speaking of Twitter, hopping over to Twitter, uh, Peyton Triplet, uh, Peyton Triplet three says, uh, Tom equals British. This is true. This is a uh, creative director Tom for Game Theory. Uh, British equals Afton. Also accurate. Afton equals Michael. Tom is Michael. <laughs> Yep, that's it. He's a purple guy. He's slowly withering away in, in the UK right now, working on his next theory. Yep, that's him. Withering away. He looks awesome in purple. He does. I like purple. I think all of us would look better in purple. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. Speaking of, speaking of wacky merch ideas and stuff, one of the things that we were talking about uh, was doing an all-purple collection. Like, all purple. Wyatt purple. Wyatt purple collection. Like, the purple huh. guy collection. Yeah. Right? Just everything purple. That'd be fun. I, right? I thought that would be fun. I've always wanted a purple jacket. Mm -hmm. Like, I, even back when I... Because so, I collected blazers. Before I started wearing, like, cool, like, pleather and leather jackets and things like that. Like, when I was growing up, I loved suit jackets. And, and the jackets that I wear now are an evolution of that when I was a kid. Where I just loved 
suit jackets and blazers, and I just liked getting formal and dressing up. And so I always, and so I tried to collect one in every color, or at least one in every interesting color, because I wanted, like, I, I loved them. And, and purple was my white whale. <laughs> purple was my purple whale, uh, where I could, you couldn't find it. I found one that wasn't great and was too big. But it was it was pretty cheap, so I, I I picked it up and it was okay. It was never my favorite, but I I picked it up because I'm like I just need a purple jacket. But yeah, I, to this day, so maybe maybe at this point we could do an purple purple jacket. You know, it'd be so sick. What's that? If our purple collection, we released clothing items with variations of value and brightness. So that our theorists who did their color analysis oh, can get the purple that best suits that best them. Matches them. That's yes. amazing. That's great. That's really fun. Style theory. There's a lot. We have a lot of fun ideas for style theory and merch and and not merch so much as it is like product offerings. Like we've talked about doing like, uh, can you do the, our version of killer heels? And it's literally like a he- high heel with a knife or like a bow staff or something, oh. right? Which would just be, like oh. it's not really. It's not so much. It would be a cool talking piece. Rather than like, oh, this is a merch item. And maybe there's a version of that that you make. Yeah. But like that kind of thing or, um, you know, we do an episode dedicated to like optimizing the perfect t-shirt or whatever. And then you like, you create, you craft it and then you you sell that. And that is like the, opt- we've done a study, cross-sectional analysis of all t-shirts and fit and, and sizing and, and material and this and that. And then you craft the perfect t-shirt and then that becomes a thing or like the, the blackest of, of black shirts or whatever, you know, stuff like that. Just, Cool, all purple. You know, there's a lot of fun stuff I think we could do with style theory that we have ideas for. And now it's just like figuring out how to execute on some of that. Yeah. Uh, which I'm, again, those fun projects that we're in the process of working on right now that I'm really excited about, but we're getting there. Woo! Yeah. Next up, back to game theory. Uh, when you live in Australia and you're one day ahead of the Americas, me Monday, no thank you, Team Tuesday. <laughs> team it Tuesday, that's it. That's right. I like it. We need more teams. Team Tuesday. Team, more Team Tuesdays. Uh, this is from uh, Emily Forrest. My reaction to Matt mentioning Professor Layton. Yes! This is over at Back on GT Live. Woo! Yeah, you know, honestly, that's one of those game franchises that I've always wanted to dive more into. Phoenix Wright's one, Layton's one, where I've always wanted to dive more into them. Like, I've, I've surface level knowledge of them. I've played moments of one. I think I played through an entirety of Phoenix Wright's. For that, uh, for a, a past theory, but I didn't do the whole series. I know that's blasphemy to Ash, who is the biggest Phoenix Wright stan. Mm-hmm, it's I true. Just, as the as the eShop was closing for 3DS, I bought a bunch of Phoenix Wright games for it, though. So did you? Yeah. So they're linger. I just you know I got to find time to play them. But yeah, I've I've I got them and I'm e- eager to play them and I wanted to grab them before they disappeared. So. Did you buy Apollo Justice? I did <gasps> for you. They... Yeah. Yes. I'm so happy Squee! you did. Squee! Yeah. Uh-huh. Squee away. So yeah, I'm, I'm very excited about it. Now it's just like I gotta carve off the time to do it. But yes, I'm very excited. Yes. Uh, apparently, I gotta read uh, FNAF books first. But oh, okay. Well, that's annoying. But <laughs> hey, you know, I don't know how Professor Layton would perform on GT Live. Is the thing I do. But you know, <laughs> the question is how much we're gonna care. Do we care about it? Well, yeah. That was my nice way of saying it will not perform yeah. very well. But <laughs> we could do it. It might be a fun we thing do a to one-off. do. So y'all could come through for us. Ooh. When we do this, no Professor pressure. Layton. No pressure. No pressure. But also, and I just made like a facial expression shift yeah, to like the, put the, pressure no, on you. No one saw that. Um, but I hope that the shift in energy went through my microphone and into your um ears. Wow. Yeah. Into your ear holes, and yep. there it is. And now they feel it. And mm-hmm. so when we when that thumbnail pops up. And Y'all best there. click. Wait, are we doing Leighton or are we doing Phoenix? Um, I was saying Leighton first. Okay. I need, I need to build up some more hype for Phoenix. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So there Until I'm seeing memes about Phoenix Wright pop up on here, you know, that's oh. one. That's okay. what we'll strike. We'll, we'll see. We'll see if the Phoenix Wright memes yeah. start pouring in. We'll strike we'll when see. it's hot. Okay. When it's hot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so many years later. Uh, uh, at all, all are, all are mad. Uh, the feeling when FNAF books be FNAF books. Here we go. Matt, Matt, drop the full FNAF time. The mimic. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Jeez. What the heck? For years, for years, the books have been like kicking along, puttering around in the background as like slight lore adjacent materials and like, oh, sometimes if you squint at it, you might be able to see some lore connection, right? Like if, oh, if 
It's, it's, it's like the LaCroix of lore. It's like there's watered down lore in here sometimes maybe when you crack it open and if it's a Tuesday. And so a Team Tuesday, right? Like that is, that is the FNAF books for years. And I have read all of them minus the stories of Happy Face because that one was the Sea Bonnies one. And I'm like, there's, there's, come on, do I really have to read this one? And now for completionist's sake, I have to, but whatever. That's the only one that I've really missed. But all of a sudden we, okay, we're like, okay, great. Let's, let's do the FNAF timeline. And then all of a sudden, first off, after years, it literally feels like a decade of me being like, the games, are, the, the books are important, the books are important, like, look at the, all of a sudden, it's like, the books are so important, and, and it's like three stories, right? It's, it's GGY, it's this mimic story, and then it's, it's like one other thing. But like, all of a sudden, the fan base just takes a full 360 and decides these are the stories that clearly are important, and these are the ones going to pay attention to because they're so explicit about how they connect to the, to the games. And it's like, Damn it! I've been here for years on the sidelines with my with my little signboard saying, "Please pay attention to the books." And now, finally, the books decide to like step it up and be like, "Well, we are important." And of course, it's after we drop the timeline, and all of it is like massive stuff too. It's like here's GGY, here's the mimic stuff, whatever. I I, I got to talk about the mimic at some point. I'm sorry, there will be a FNAF episode at some point. I'm sure talking about the mimic, it'll get there. Just saying, just saying. Thanks a lot, books. Man, the nerve of these books. Then the movie's gonna drop. Oh man, poor little bit. All I'm saying is, all I'm saying is, yeah. Phoenix Wright would never. No, Phoenix Wright wouldn't. Ace Attorney would never pull this on you. Are you sure? I'm positive. We all, we all, we all assume it, and then all of a sudden, it's gonna happen. <laughs> well, you know. Maybe one day when they release Ace Attorney Seven, I might be proven wrong. You know what I would like to do, Ash? What's up? If we're talking to Ace Attorney stuff, mm-hmm. I would love to do the Phoenix Wright musical. <gasps> oh, have you my seen gosh. it? It is such a deep cut. It's a deep yes, cut. it is. It's d- so deep. There, there's an official. It's official. I'm not talking. Random Encounters has also done their version of a Phoenix Wright musical, and and I love Random Encounters. They're great. I love working with them. They're wonderful. But there is an official Phoenix Wright musical that exists and is pretty awesome. Yeah. It's legit. It's very, very cool. If you haven't looked, dig around. I bet you can find it. On, I, I'm assuming you could probably find it on YouTube too, because I, I don't think there's going to be a whole lot of like, pro, like copyright. Like, I'm going to break this down it. or whatever. Yeah. Like, right. <laughs> Check it out. It is wild. It's a wild ride. It is. It is. It's cool. It's cool. We, we should do again <laughs> weird off the wall projects that I just want to do uh-huh. if I ever achieve free time. The the element of free time is uh, do a, a staged production or maybe a YouTube production <laughs> of the Phoenix Wright musical with everyone. Who would you want to play your Apollo Justice? Who are you casting? Oh, Who's it, your fan cast? In, in Apollo Justice, if we did that? Yeah, or sure. just like yeah. in the Phoenix Wright musical as we know it? In, uh, let's say in the Phoenix Wright musical as we know it. Okay. Although that's a, that's too deep of a cut because now you're layers and layers. Who's your Phoenix Wright and who's your Apollo Justice? I'm just curious. Oh, like in office? Or no, in, in the wider YouTube in ecosystem. In the wider who, YouTube space. Who am I reaching out? Am I hitting up Dream? And I'm like, Dream, you are <laughs> our, our fixer. Oh, God. Am I oh, hitting up, am I hitting up uh, Tommy in it? I'm like, hey, you're, you're, our, you're our Apollo Justice. <laughs> I like how you're reaching into Dream SMPs. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why. I'm not, I think the reason why I did it is because I'm like, who's going to be the funniest person to cast as these roles? And I feel like those are pretty funny. Just because, like, them and, like, legal d- stage musical drama feel not... I mean, I, they had their political drama and S&P stuff, so yeah. I don't know. Part, uh, I think it's part of Chica's Party World. Laugh out loud bit. Yeah, no one... Poor Lulbit. <laughs> There's too many other... Here, where's ChatGPT? ChatGPT! Who is Lulbit? Who is Lulbit? See, there you go. It's going to solve the lore for us. <laughs> Taking my job, Lul... Taking my job, ChatGPT. Minor character in the Five Nights at Freddy's franchise, small pixelated fox character that appeared in the spin-off game FNAF World, later made a brief appearance in Five Nights at Freddy's sister location. FNAF World, while well, appears as a non-playable character that provides the player with various items and upgrades, it is depicted as a mischievous character with a playful attitude. Five Nights at Freddy's sister location, it appears as a minor Easter egg character that can be seen on a computer screen in the game's custom night mode. It's not directly involved in the game's story or mechanics. Overall, Lulbit is a relatively minor character in the franchise and does not have a significant... Oh, excuse me. Not until... <laughs> who knows till the next book the next book is gonna come out and lulbit is suddenly gonna be pivotal to everything that's what's gonna happen there uh okay where was lulbit 
There we go. Over on Twitter, this is at, at AceChild12. After so long, I finished them. I love, I love the design and the aesthetics of these. So cool. I like that, um, I like the detail of the, of the bandage. Or ring? Bandage? Ring? What do you think? Is, I think it's a ring. I is think film theory mar- married? Or just wearing a cool ring? I, hold on. Rotation. That's on the right hand. That is right. So, hand. That's true. Yep. Good point. Also, shout out to uh, Gravity Falls. Oh, yeah. Right? Love that. That's awesome. Ollie's been introduced to one or two episodes of Gravity Falls. They're a bit scary, which I, I'm i picking and choosing which ones are, like, least scary. But he loves monsters and monster design and cool, like, creepy mysteries. And I'm like, oh, this is your show. Give it, like, a year, bud. Um, style theory. I love the Mickey gloves. Super cool. Awesome. Uh, at Completely Clueless... Uh, back on the subreddit, the most mysterious blue flavor is actually, <laughs> I saw this actually the other day, this is great, is actually Blue Moon Ice Cream. Uh, Matt Pat solving the mysterious blue flavor, Blue Moon Ice, this is great, I agree. You know, we solved Blue ra- We solved blue Raspberry, what is Blue Moon Ice Cream? Kids love it. Is it, is it, it's just cotton candy, right? I've never heard of it until this meme. No way, really? I, no, oh. I'm so serious. It's, it, or, or like Blue Superman? There's, like, Superman ice cream. Oh, I've heard of Superman, but I see he has, like, the yellow and the red in him, yeah, too. Yeah, Superman ice cream is the, like, blue, yellow, red, which is just, like, sweet. Like, I, I don't know. I, uh, and maybe Superman is one of those flavors that varies. I also have a feeling that you don't see Superman flavor anymore because of copyright. Like, I feel <laughs> like I feel like the internet has gotten to the point, when, and popular consensus and, and consciousness has gotten to the point where people are like, I can't name my ice cream flavor Superman. Like, DC is going to come and smack me down. James Gunn, new head of DC Studios, is going to be like, now that I'm done with Guardians, I'm slapping down anyone's got inappropriately flavored ice cream. Yeah, no. No longer Superman. Only yeah. duper guy. Yeah, right, exactly. There it is. But Blue Moon Ice Cream. Well, I think there's a place not far from here. So we, we did in uh we did in Food Theory this past weekend, we did uh the spicy food, the spicy ice cream challenge. Yeah. And at Sunny Skies, which is incredible. If you're ever in rural North Carolina, check that one out. Um I think they have Blue Moon Ice Cream. It might be worth the hour trip down there Ooh. for us to go have an ice cream ice cream date. It'll be fun. Field trip. It'll be fun. All right. Uh, at Windy Windigo, uh, Ronan's Truther. Windigo is weird. Uh, GT fan art. I did this while waiting uh, for third day where I could lice tweet. For the day where I could live tweet this. There it is. This is from the first live stream. And oh, that's awesome. Tom and I found this and we loved it so much it's, that I wanted to put it in front of this you. This is serving like like Nickelodeon energy. Right? This is serving hard Nickelodeon. I love the style. It's so cool. And I love all the Easter eggs hidden here. <laughs> I mean, obviously there's there's Sonic and stuff, but like some some deep cuts Bad over end here. Theater. Bad End Theater. And you got some uh, Cooking Companions. You got some guys peeking in. Style Theory representation. GT Not Live! Why don't you expand that image? I can't I think there's some it. more hidden within. What is this thing? Is that Choo Choo Charles? <laughs> it is right. That's, yes, that's Choo Choo Charles. That's his little arms. Incredible. I love it. Also, uh, don't steal my fingerprints. Jeez. Fingerprints do not steal. <laughs> Original <laughs> fingerprints do not steal. Back rooms and women collab. There it is. <laughs> nice. This is exactly. This is canon to what Ash looks like. Actually. Yeah, they got my eyebrows, which makes me really happy. <laughs> Absolutely, would not change a thing. Uh, at the Mad Jam over on uh, the subreddit again. You hear Matt Pat mention the mimic? Yeah, we're talking from half time. It's on <laughs> It's on I know. I got it. Like I said, I got to talk about the mimic at some point. But, you know, it's not my problem that Vita, it's not my fault that Vita Carnus literally took every, like, creature ever and threw it all into their, their canon. The mimic. Love it. So good. One of the scariest creatures in that series. Uh, at Ananas. Ananas. I know it was a really long time ago, but GT Live. Say the line, a day shift at Freddy's body. Thank. Yeah. Oh, man, that's a deep cut. Do you know that one? I actually learned of this pretty recently. Did you really? Yeah. How did you learn about this one? Um, I was doing a live stream with head editor Dan, uh-huh. um, and we were going over, like, a uh, GT Live iceberg that yeah. someone, that a group of people had created, uh-huh. and Thank was on there. Yeah, Thank. So I saw this, and I was like, haha, I know that. Oh, man, there were there were some good, like, Day Shift to Freddy's had some good memes to come out of it, uh... FNAF World had great one, like, hot cheese! Hot cheese! I miss hot cheese. I learned about that one, too. Yeah, hot cheese was a win for a long time. Yeah. Hot cheese was great. Thank. Awesome. We, we thank. would thank every all the time. It was awesome. Yep. 
unfortunately now with how YouTube has, has gotten its, you know, day shift is just too aggressive for mm. the, the the current state of YouTube where it's like, it's, it was, it was pretty aggressive when we did it too. We're like, Oh, that's, that's a lot of curse words or whatever, but it was fun. But yeah, at this point, I think we have to like stay away from it and keep, keep things cleaner. Dang. Okay. For, this is uh, at uh, G, uh, GBMBD. For GT Live memes and fan art. Oh, this is... Uh, yeah, they 3D printed the, the lamps, or they made the, the lamps for each of the channels, right? Yes, yes. Oh, so awesome. Look at these. These are incredible. I love them so much. That's wonderful. Oh, my gosh! Yes! Can can I can I hire this person to be our merch company? <laughs> Whoa! Oh. Surprise! It's a twist. Popcorn. Popcorn. This is awesome. I love it. This I I I, I kind of joke about that, but I also kind of don't. Where we've seen designs that have appeared in fan art and like, hey, I pitched. You know, this is like what my ideal uh, game theory merch would look like. And we produced, we bought the design off of them and then we, we produced it at scale. And it was actually one of our best selling items in the last like two years or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so seeing this, this is awesome. We should, we should hit that up at some point, yeah. uh, as far as contacting you about, you know, working with you or figuring out something about like, Hey, that's a really cool lamp design. Cause that's incredible. I would, I, I just want one of those just to have, cause it's so cool. And Peepa too. A little popcorn peepa too. Oh, with the Hilton popcorn pouch. I would I would love that. It's amazing. Let's see. Millie is smelly. It's the lore man. This is probably cringe. I have no idea. Wow, how'd you get like that? Every time I say lore, I do one push up. You know, honestly, <laughs> this is something that this is something I should do. I, th I thought about it for when we were, like, dying a bunch in, like, Ultimate Custom Night and stuff is doing something like this. As I try to get healthier, because I, I need to get healthier just because work keeps me away from doing things that keep me healthy. <laughs> work, health. Woo! Two words diverge in that for us. Uh, but something like this to, to fuse the two together, it's a great idea. This is a workout plan. You'll see me. Beef out. Yes. Be amazing. You know, Matt, I keep telling you that Buff we should go on our croc walks. We could. Yeah. We could. You know, take Orphan. a little, take a little break, get some sunshine. See, see but see, you said the word right there, which is taking a break. Which, <sighs> if I take a break, everything collapses. Okay, well, I'm maybe... spinning the plates. I'm spinning. How can I? How can I launch? You know, the uh, uh, 3D printed line of lights while also working on lo-fi while also doing 11 videos a week while also getting ahead on brand deal X and whatever. Okay, so you could do what I do and go on my 8 p.m. croc walks after. At, don't say that after is another. Please don't. Please, Matt. Well, that, that's when recordings happen. Oh, my. Oh. No, there's oh. there's the window of time between six, five, maybe sometimes five, six, whatever, and, and eight, where it's like, hey. And I, I spend a lot of time with Ollie. But, like, but that's, <laughs> that is the time every day that I'm like, I have to make sure that we spend time together and this and that. And that's dinner yeah. and whatever. But then as soon as he's to bed, I get to spend quality time back there. <laughs> In the recording booth. That's, yeah, they're over there hanging out. Okay, so... What I'm hearing is... I can crock walk up and down the stairs. Croc walk up and down the stairs. Maybe a little 3 a.m. moment. Yeah. We could do that. Yeah. You know. Okay. With our flashlights. Oh, 3 a.m. 3 a.m. is the hour of the day. Like, usually I try to cut it off by 2 a.m. Yeah. And I can do that three days a week. I, I, I know what the limits are at this point. I, I know I can do it three days a week before I absolutely, like, I'm just devastated. Right. So... You know, something 3 a.m. You're asking me to push my boundaries, Ash. Oh. You're, ch you're challenging me. Okay. Okay, we could do it. Or we can wake up at four. Oh, okay. Well, you know, that at least that guarantees us some sleep. Three a.m. is like the scariest time better. of the day. YouTube has taught me that three a.m. is the scariest time of the day. That's demons hour. Demons hour. Spooky, yeah. Spooky hour. Okay. Okay. We'll we'll walk. Here we go. Spe oh, hey, that weird bloated hamster thing is really doing work, huh? Uh, that's Ivasaur. Two bi. Everyone enjoying the video. Me waiting for the flower pot to fall over. The bloated hamster. Are you talking is about that, bread? Is that bread? That's bread. I am so okay. Y'all, that's, that's bread. I would like to make it Blood very hamster. clear. I love it. I would like to make it very clear that I have thoroughly analyzed the physical composition of this bread to find the ideal divot and positioning to place this plant. I, I could see people being on this. That's like the equivalent of having like low battery on your phone. Yeah. And I understand how some might think 
that it could fall over at any moment. You never know. That's why you got to keep watching. That's how we get the retention time out. It has nothing to do with the gameplay. It has nothing to do with my commentary, how funny I am, how scripts are written, nothing like that. Yeah, It no. has everything to do with you just sitting there watching till the bitter end, waiting for that thing to fall. And one day it will. Yep. Because I'm a mastermind. One day. One day at the end, you'll see it fall. And it'll be at the very, very end of a video. Yep. And then you'll be, and you could say, I was there that day. That, the day that the plant the fell. The day the plant fell off the hamster. The drama llama has fallen before the plant has. Oh, certainly. Which I find yeah. wild. Drama llama is incredibly unstable. <laughs> which fits with the concept of a drama llama. Yeah. You know. Right. Certainly. Next up. Uh, by G.H. Irox. Uh, we are less than two weeks away and nothing, but any analog game gets over an hour of trailer analysis. What's this? I think I forgot something. If, if you, you forgot, forgot, then it wasn't important. Yeah, you're right. Tears of the Kingdom! Yeah, I saw, I, Garden of Ban Ban, though, man. Garden of Ban Ban came out. Uh, no, this is talking about theories, too. Like, so, obviously, you know, with uh, Amanda the Adventurer, uh, we had... Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, so, uh, about that one. Um, it's, uh, it's tricky, right? Because I, I would love to do more... Zelda theories, especially with Tears of the Kingdom coming out, I think I think part of the challenge of it, right, is the lore of Zelda is tricky to get into, and especially with, like, Breath of the Wild especially, like, broadened out the lore a lot, and so there's a lot of catch-up to, to do with people, but also, in general, Nintendo's been hard to work with, like, and not work with, like, personally, but they are have been very inconsistent with how they enforce things on YouTube, right? And I think that scared a lot of people away from covering Nintendo stuff or, or being as, like, vocal about it. Like, the, a lot of their policies about, like, we're striking down this fan convention and we're striking down this tournament and, you know, we're claiming this video. And it's, like, it's very inconsistent. And it's, in a lot of cases, it is against a lot of, like, the hardest core fans out there who just want to celebrate the franchises. And so... On one hand, it's like, yeah, I'd love to. But on the other hand, you know, I, I, ha I have more conflicted feelings about Nintendo than I used to. Um, when we were at the Mario movie premiere, we actually met one of our, our old contacts that back when we used to associate with Nintendo a lot. And it was great to reconnect with him and it was wonderful. And he's like, hey, let's just catch up and, and you know, let's let's not not bury the hatchet because that's the, that's the wrong way of putting it. But like, let's let's you know, re reconnect and, and rewarm this relationship that, you know, has been kind of cold with uh, the creator community in a while and stuff. So, like, I, I'm due to talk with him at some point um, just to see, like, hey, what, what are you guys doing at this point? Like, what what's the deal? Because um, I think there's, it's it's twofold, right? One is, yeah, Zelda and, and, and stuff is, is, especially from a lore standpoint, is tricky to cover. I think science theories are really fun. I think the the world of Legend of Zelda and especially Breath of the Wild had some really fun science things that anyone could understand that that was good. But even me as a fan of these series, like I've played every Zelda game, but you know, you talk about some of the lore bits that people are talking about nowadays, it's it's to a level of depth that I'm like, I played these games, I don't know them. And so it'd be on one hand, I guess it would be good for me to to teach that, but also I'm a little bit afraid of getting it wrong. Because long gone are the days where it's like, and it's a divided timeline, and and no, and it didn't have lore, right? Now, at this point, it's got, there's been so much lore injected into it in such a short amount of time. So, I don't, I don't know. Um, but, that being said, yeah, like I've said too, there's been a lot of other stuff that is more resonant with the, the fan base, or at least things that, that, you know, we've covered Amanda the Adventure a lot lately. We've covered, um, you know, a lot of these indie horror games that have come out a lot lately. So, it's like, well, those kind of get first in line. But no, I, and... He, I have a, it's funny that you mention it, because I have a Breath of the Wild slash Tears of the Kingdom theory ready to go. We have one ready to go that we've been sitting on. We've just been waiting to release it because we weren't sure if it made more sense to release it before the game or after the game. And we ultimately decided that it should probably go after the game because if we released it, the game has the chance of immediately disproving it if we pitch it one way. But if we, but if the game goes the way we think it's going to go, the game now, the new game now serves as additional evidence for it, and we can kind of like take it and uh, go a little bit further with the theory. So that's the other thing I'd say here is we've been sitting on a theory. We have one in a like rough draft state, and we know where it's going. We just are waiting to see where this game comes out and 
how it affects the theory itself. And we didn't want the R theory to be disproved literally like the next week or whatever. So, so that's that. It's been there. We've been sitting on it. Timing just hasn't been right yet. Last couple here. Speed run. Imagine Matt not knowing his own lore. This is uh, Star Nathaniel. Okay, so that's A video game released in August 2014 created by Scott Co <laughs> Hey, wait, am I Scott Cawthon? <laughs> You're right, I don't know my own lore. What am I doing? I love it! Look at that grin, dude. <laughs> like, there it is. That's awesome. A video game released in August 2014, created by Scott Co <laughs> I, li I like that this is a user report for misinformation, by the way. <laughs> Is this misinformation? Uh, no, I am Scott Cawthon. I've been, I've been the reason I've been traveling so much is I've been like dictating all the moves on the on the Five Nights at Freddy's uh, movie set. Duh, obviously. Come on, guys. Jeez. Oh, that's so funny. I, I look good too as Scott Cawthon. I look pretty good. I would say if you were secretly Scott Cawthon, that is one genius marketing tactic you have. Right, that'd be great. Of like making like obscure things and then theorizing about your own things, but not telling anyone that it was you. Yeah. Mastermind. That's... Like Taylor Swift, I'm a mastermind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. all my... Oh, here we go. Uh, this is R. Plemel, uh, Malia, on Twitter. No one, Matt, Tom, and John. My favorite moment so far on GT Live. Me and the boys on <laughs> Sonic after GT We did go to Sonic after that GT Live. So that was this is after the live stream. During the live stream, we're all like, man, we could really go to Sonic. Like, I really feel like going to Sonic. <laughs> and we went to Sonic, and we got so many beverages. We did. All the beverages and all the ice creams. It was like one of everything. Not one of everything, but like one one instance of every like different type of drink or whatever. It's great. I also want to call attention. Can you please repeat the um the the at of this user? At Malia? R R Plemel. <laughs> it's Urple Mal. Urple Mal <laughs> R R R Plemel. R Plemel. Obviously, it's our plebble. Urple Mal. There it is, Urple. <laughs> Sorry, when I see the letters O U R, my initial impulse is not usually Urple. Our plebble. Our plebble. What's up, everybody? It's our plebble. Back again for another. <laughs> I love it. Oh, all right. Hey, this is ChatGPT. That was the thing that we used at one point. And then lastly, that's it. And that was our last one. Urple Mal. Or R Plemel. We're ending it with R Plemel. R Plemel. It's R well, Plemel. Well, guys, uh, just as we wrap things up here, just so you know, uh, if you want to be like R Plemel and send us your favorite memes, uh, you know, hit, hit us up over on Twitter. I'm at MattPatGT, M-E-T-P-A-T-G-T. -T. Use the hashtag GT Live. Uh, that's a way that we'll see it over on uh, the, the Bird website. And then over on Reddit, you know, we've got literally a subreddit for everything. There's kind of the Game Theory subreddit. That's kind of a catch-all. That's the big one. Um, that's kind of our default go-to. But there are definitely, like, Game Theory memes. There's Style Theory. There's Film Theory. There's GT Live. And we're checking all of them. So hit them up. Send them our way. Let me know down in the comments uh, the answers to some of the questions I asked. Stuff like, hey, would you want to see Lo-Fi? Hey, is this uh, some of the cool stuff that you'd like to see? Um... And with that, friends, I think that brings us to the close of another uh, Reddit uh, meme review. My yes. Friend. So once again, thank you to AirUp for sponsoring today's episode uh, and for being a part of it and for keeping me hydrated. And thank you, most of all, for providing us content for the day and for, you know, all the amazing stuff that you do to engage with this community. As always, it is wonderful to be able to review this stuff. And like I mentioned at the top, the things that we don't react to live, we have seen, we're circulating. We are, I'm in there at least once or twice a day, just looking through things in between breaks, whenever I need just like in between meetings, whatever. It's just, it's a nice refresh for me. It's, you know, there's a lot of toxic, sad places to go on the internet. And our subreddit is like the least, it is not the least of those. I was going to say is the, the uh, complete opposite of that. It's just such a joyful community where everyone's like celebrating stuff. It's great. So uh, please continue engaging over there. And as always, it was wonderful sitting on the couch with you. Uh, did you have something that you wanted to say? Yes, I do. So please continue to share your wonderful fan art um, on the subreddit, whether that's um, r slash game theorists or r slash GT live. Um, you might actually see a post from me um, coming up Ooh. saying, hey, another fan art call. Yeah. It's about darn time to so, get some more fan art on the wall. So, Oh, you swapped out, swapped out Chris and Dan. 
Yeah, so that was a one episode special just to show that they still existed in nice. harmony together. Great. Um but yes, post those on the subreddit. Again, like Matt said, you could also put them on Twitter at MattPatGT, at AshGTLive, hashtag GT Live. Follow your dreams, achieve your goals, um, get enough calcium in your diet. Wow. And with that, that was, see, that was too many eight things to call to action. They're not going to do any of those. I'm, well, they weren't called to action. It was like more like a, a motivational okay. phrase. Motivational. Calcium. Yeah. Calcium! Yes. Calcium! Yes. Yeah, my boys! Watch out for the plant. Is it going to go? Is it going to go? Is it going to go? Not today. And remember, my friends, it wasn't a live stream, but it was a video. A video for you. See ya! Bye.